space and really interfering uh, with the highways that we need to have you know much better tra traffic on. Um, decreased glymphatic activity in the glymphatic system. I'm sure everyone's familiar with the lymphatic system, but the glymphatic system is what ultimately drains the brain of waste products. And it's important that this happen. We know that the glymphatic system is more active at night when we're getting high quality sleep. Um, and that with less of this glymphatic activity, there is an acceleration to brain aging. So that's where, you know, the quality of our sleep is really important. I'm not going to spend that much uh, time on that today. Impaired circulation and capillary function, um, you know, blood flow is everything, right? And if we can't have adequate blood flow delivering nutrients and oxygen and uh, everything required for normal metabolic processes in our gray matter, uh, if we can't get that blood flow there, then everything starts to break down. So, you know, much is the case with reducing uh, TIAs or strokes and, you know, keeping cerebrovascular health as paramount. We have to, we have to maintain high levels of, of circular, circulation, especially in those tiny capillaries that are ultimately the, you know, the inroads to, to neurological function. We, and if we have a breakdown there for whatever reason, um, you know, excessive platelet aggregation, you know, which we know is caused by different dietary factors. Uh, vasoconstriction, uh, of course, is an issue for a lot of people, especially uh, older adults, uh, not maintaining enough zeta potential. That may be a new one to some of you, which is zeta potential is simply the strength of repulsion between two molecules, or in this case, between our red blood cells and capillary walls. We need to have a high level of repulsion and so it's important that our red blood cells pick up a, a negative charge. That's how we describe it uh, in electrochemistry. And that, elect, that uh, negative electrical charge has to be attained through certain processes in the body. And one of those is, as an example, sulfation, which is where we attach a sulfate anion to a red blood cell. You know, and that's, you know, that's going to be limited in a lot of adults, especially those who maybe don't have enough dietary sulfur or don't spend enough time out in the sun, um, because those are really both uh, important components to the sulfation process in the body. And then there's obviously genetic components to this as well, um, you know, because sulfation is driven by enzymes that have a genetic uh, component to them. Hey, and then lastly, which is something I, you know, I speak to quite frequently um, when I I mean, you know, my role as a nutrition educator uh, and, you know, working as at universities as a as a professor in the past, it's oxidative stress. This is one of the primary causes of chronic disease across the board. And we know that oxidative stress and the, a higher level of reactive oxygen species takes its toll on just about every aspect of our cells and damages genetic material in this case you know, certainly ties into loss of mitochondrial function and an inability for neurons to maintain a certain, uh, you know, a certain order of maintain a high order, which is required for, you know, branching, uh, which is, you know, ultimately needed for more synthesis.